All right. What's up, everybody? This is Alex from Xtrades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It was absolutely insane. I did mention it would feel like a coin toss last week, and that's exactly what we got. We were very stacked with data, FOMC, earnings, and it was just all over the place. Big bounces, big dumps, just all over the place. So hopefully you guys survived. It was a very crazy week. And if you tuned in last week, we had a pretty good list, actually. We had Diz calls on watch. I was actually in that trade, and we closed that for about 27%. That ended up running up to that one-day 9 EMA cloud. Rejected off that, I think, Thursday or Friday very aggressively. So I think we sold at the right spot. Also filled most of its gap. So Diz went pretty good. Hopefully you guys caught that one. We also had CMG calls, which did really well. That ended up bouncing off the one week 50 SMA. Had a very nice bounce. Even kind of closed with a breakout. So that setup still could be good, but it did run up pretty well. So you should have been able to cash out on that one for CMG calls. I think it did find some resistance at the one day 921 EMA cloud. So that was a little bit of an issue. It probably needs to get back over the one day 200 SMA. SMA as well, kind of acting as a resistance area. So CMG went good as well. Bounced first thing Monday, ran all the way up into Thursday, maybe. Did very well. We also had SMH calls that we were looking at, and that one was kind of mixed. It's very all over the place due to NVIDIA, and there was a couple chip earnings as well, like AMD, Intel. There's a couple other things. So Semis had a very volatile week. It actually closed under that trend line we were looking for a bounce for, and then bounced the very next day. So you would have had to actually hold through that trend line breakdown to even get paid last week. So that was a tough setup. It also closed under the previous week low with a one day bar so that was another kind of signal that we could go lower but it did bounce back very aggressively and then actually came lower again later in the week so smh is very back and forth very volatile i don't think it really played out how i wanted to see it i would like to see a direct bounce from the trend and just continue no flushes through the trend line closing under it, bouncing back over it, all that stuff, big fake outs. I don't like that stuff. So SMH was a tough one, but hopefully you bought at the right spot. And I guess there was an opportunity to get paid on SMH. And for trades last week on our app.xtrades.net, ended up closing those disc calls, made 27% on that had two stop outs on QQQ day trades, 134%, 144%. Ended up taking a SPY 537 call scalp that day, made back 33%. So this day was kind of mixed. Day after that, took Nvidia puts at that 116 resistance. Ended up making about 21% on that. We have another QQQ stop out for almost a 50% loss on a day trade. Luckily, all of these are pretty small size anyways. Any zero days or short dates, I'm taking very small positions. So the drawdown isn't too bad. That same day, we ended up taking a Meta 505 call. Actually, I remember this being up almost $130 a contract. And I got a little bit greedy, came back down, ended up closing at break even. And then another scalp here, we have a NASDAQ QQQ 455 call, made about 22% on that one and then friday friday sucked we have two spy calls one for 535 lost about 42 percent second one closed about 35 percent so very back and forth couple losses here couple wins there overall i feel like it's been a pretty good past couple months lots of green couple losses still trying to minimize those a little bit but it's been a little bit easier to swing trade than day trade i guess i feel like my swing trades have done a little bit better and my day trades have been very back and forth as you can see i mean all these are day trades so very back and forth, but that comes with the business and the territory. All right, let's go ahead and get into our economic calendar for the week. It's actually very quiet and I'm fine with that. Obviously there's probably gonna be volatility still, despite really kind of lacking data here. Monday, we do have services PMI and also ISM services. So ISM services is probably gonna be the big one. The services PMI as well can move us, but the ISM is definitely a big mover for bonds, for currencies and stuff like that. So definitely pay attention to that on Monday. And then on Thursday, due to that non-farm payrolls data that came out on Friday, I would definitely pay attention to the initial jobless claims. I feel like people are starting to pay attention to the labor market now. We had unemployment tick up to 4.3%. Non-farm payrolls kind of miss a little bit on jobs added. So we'll see how that goes. I feel like the initial jobless claims on Thursdays can start kind of giving us a little hint into the labor market especially after that freak out on friday markets pull back huge lots of recession talks and stuff like that just from that unemployment tick up so definitely pay attention to that on thursday and then really there's just one fed speaker at 3 p.m that's gonna be barking and that's really it i don't think consumer credit's gonna move us i don't think the trade deficit's gonna move us it's really just pmis and also ism services that's gonna be on monday so that's really it guys it's very quiet no big data for the week we also got all those big boy earnings out of the way as well and before we get into our setups for the week let's go ahead and get into seasonality real quick last week did average a little pullback as you can see we did follow that pretty well for this week we do have 
Over the last 20 years, August 5th to the 9th, we have winning trades at 60% with so much profit at 0%. So very flat for the 20 year. Nothing special here, but overall for the rest of August until the end of August, we do have a little kind of pullback here continuing. For the 10 year data set, it's a little bit better. We have a small little uptick here. As you can see, over the last 10 years, we have winning trades at 60% with a summarized profit of 1%. So the 10 year data set, a little bit more clear, a little bit more bullish, 20 year, a little bit more flat, summarized profit at zero. Not a crazy probability for winning trades either. So that should be interesting. I feel like the 20 year is a little bit more reliable. But obviously, you know, tapping into more recent market conditions with the 10 years is good as well but yeah you can see i mean nothing really special for the 20 year data set and as you can see it does continue down into late august i also posted this in the watchlist channel you can see august negative returns over the last 16 years and we have september even more negative over the last 16 years i think this is from unusualwhales.com if you want to go check that out and the one we usually look at every week is seasonality.ai if you are interested in seasonality as you can see august and september suck for the spy all righty and on to setups for the week we do have futures down very aggressively nasdaq down over 1.5 percent we have es down almost one percent so we might see a gap down but obviously the overnight session given the volatility we could bounce back i have no clue but one thing i'm looking at here we do have apple we're kind of still a little bit higher on apple it hasn't really followed like the index and the nasdaq as much apple's a pretty strong name and sometimes it could even be a safety play like people will rotate into apple even when the broad market is selling off well we did get some news over the weekend that warren buffett did trim 50 percent of his position basically and is holding a lot of cash now. So could that be a warning sign of a cycle end? Who knows? Maybe he's just taking profits for taxes. Who knows? But either way, we do have a test one, a test two, a test three, kind of a test four. Didn't really bounce with the test four, but this is a pretty good trend line for Apple. And we're kind of seeing some shakiness here at the trend line. We have a flush under. We had a pop after the earnings and now kind of back testing it and wicking very aggressively off of it. So I am going to look for a pullback at least up until September, maybe. So I'll look at September puts monthly expiration on Apple here and for price targets for a conservative level, probably just shoot down for maybe 207 or so. You can see we're kind of still trending over the 50 SMA here as well. So if you do enter up here and assuming we even open up here, I mean, Monday, we could have a bloodbath just due to Warren Buffett. Who knows? That could completely invalidate what I'm looking for. If it opens down too much, I'll have to wait for it to bounce before getting in. I'm not just going to chase into the lows. Obviously, I'll wait for a bounce, then enter puts still September monthly expiration. We have a negative MACD. That's good. The RSI is kind of midpoint, so nothing special there. And still over the 50 SMA. So I mean, it's still in an uptrend. It is kind of breaking that 921 EMA cloud. Once this broke, you can kind of see it starting to get a little bit shakier. Assuming it does kind of stay under that cloud, stays under the trend. I feel like this could flush pretty good. If it does shoot back up for some reason and just goes back in line with the trend, you could just stop out, be a little bit more careful. And likewise, if we gap down too aggressively, let's say, you know, people get spooked on Warren selling out and it opens all the way down here, you know, just wait. You don't got to chase into the lows. If it gets too close to 207, it's too close to 207. So that's for Apple. Watch for puts potentially. It's still got some room down, in my opinion. It's a little bit more elevated than the indexes. So I like it. All right. Number two, on to Tesla. This is going to be a very short term kind of play. I'm not looking for like a swing on this. I'm looking for a quick bounce. We do have the 50 percent Fibonacci meeting at the same spot as the 50 SMA and also the 200 SMA which you can see the dots right here so I'm kind of hoping to just see a quick snap back here obviously if we gap down below the 200 SMA that could be an issue but even if it does that I feel like it could still kind of fill the gap back up because we're kind of still you know we're over the 61.8 we're over the 50 percent so we could see a quick bounce and I'll kind of look for day trades for Tesla calls so that's really it there's nothing really super special for a swing trade or kind of a longer dated swing or anything like that i don't think i mean you could look at this as a discount area it's the 50 percent fibonacci it's the 50 sma and it's the 200 sma as well it hasn't been at this area since it broke over it back here so it's a pretty good spot to add i mean i like it it's a little bit more contrarian given the market and tech right now just kind of selling off aggressively following that august seasonality getting those recession vibes really high vix just crazy markets last week so i understand if the buying down here is a little bit sketchy but gotta try to make some money somewhere so hopefully we can see a bounce off Tesla 50 SMA 200 SMA 50% Fibonacci it's that simple and then for price targets obviously you can just go with option premium if you're day trading you know I sell 20 30% sometimes 50% just depends could also shoot for that 38.2 
all the way at about 220. It's not too greedy. And then for risk off, if it does start closing under the 200 SMA, you could be a little bit more careful about buying the dip. But if it does pull into the 61.8 at about 190, that's another spot to look for a bounce. The golden ratio or the 61.8 fib is a very good level to look for a bounce as well. Watch the 50%. If it gaps below, watch the 61.8. But overall right now, if we do kind of open at the same spot, watch the 50, the 200, and the 50% fib right here. So as for Tesla, looking at calls for day trades. All right. And last but not least, for our individual tickers, we're going over crowd and you already know I like to look for discounts in the market. So maybe you already suspected that I was going to throw in some kind of oversold play like I usually do. And here we are in crowd with a very oversold RSI. It's been selling all the way from back here in July. And then we also have the one week 200 SMA, which is the first time it's been here since like late 2023 in August and September. So I'm watching that for a dead cap bounce. I'm not sure if I would scoop very heavy down here, given that September is going to be potentially weak as well, and you could find a better spot. But I am looking for a quick dead cap bounce if it does want to leg lower. We also do have a potential kind of little doji candle down here. Maybe that's signaling a reversal, but we have to get it over that 221.48, which is the Friday high, or this little kind of island candle. Need to get over the high of that, and that could fill up these sell and balance candles. You also have a little gap right here as well. So maybe we can get up to that little gap. But overall, you guys know if I buy below the 921 EMA cloud, this little red thing, once the price gets up to it, I sell at it. Same thing on Diz last week. Same thing on QQQ. When you buy below the 921 on the one day, you sell once it reaches it. That is your price target. You just got to use it because it could act as a lower high and rejects lower. And that's really if you're just trading and doing short term stuff. Obviously, long term, totally different. You're going to have to hold through once it gets to the cloud. You got to wait for it to break out of the cloud. If you're buying it at a discount for a long term but for short term stuff and a short term trend if you're buying below you want to sell once it gets to the cloud so that's for crowd very oversold rsi macd is still negative you could wait for it to cross but macd is a little bit delayed like once you get the cross it could definitely just reject right after it crosses and overall kind of just paying attention to price candles levels it's going to kind of pay off a little bit better than waiting for a macd to cross so that's for crowd looking very oversold potential dip buy, very contrarian, very risky, be careful. All right, and on to the indexes. I'll try to go over this as quick as possible because the SPY and QQQ VIX segment does take up at least half the video. So I'll try to round them up a little bit quicker. That way you guys don't feel bored or like the videos dragged out too much. So for last week, we were really just focused on the trend line play. We drew a new trend line all the way from October lows. I don't know why it's like this. There we go. So we're looking at this trend line. We got test one, test two, test three, test four. And we were kind of holding it up here from Friday's close. And then we also had the 50 SMA holding here as well. We did dip below it, but I did mention this little gap area. As long as price is holding over 537, maybe I said 536, as long as it was holding this little kind of gap area as a zone, we could bounce back up and we did do that. So we pulled into the gap zone on Tuesday. Even though this gap was already closed, we had established support from this low on Thursday the 25th. So this little candle low was kind of our new support. So we did close below the trend line, but overall we still held up our zone. And we got a pretty nice snapback up into FOMC. We even closed over the one day 921 EMA cloud, starting to look a little bit good. But I would like to add, we did hit the 61.8% retracement. So if you draw fibs, you know you want to sell once it gets up to the 61.8, especially if you're measuring a downtrend like this. Hits the 61.8, rejects very aggressively brutal so yeah that was really it we were kind of just focused on a trend line bounce we we're also looking for vix to get under 16 which it did for a brief period but then switched up on us you know thursday and friday very aggressively so now we're kind of broken the trend line we're under the 50 sma and overall it's a little bit riskier to kind of buy the dip at the moment but if you are a contrarian we do have a new gap here i don't even have to change this actually so this old gap is the same gap as this new one right here so maybe if we bounce you know i could see up to maybe 540 we also have an old back test area right here at 533 but honestly if futures stay down right now, we're probably going to open, you know, down here, maybe about 530 or so. So overall, if you're paying attention to SPY, you want SPY to get back over 533. 533 is this old back test, old bounce area. And we want to start closing back over that to kind of 
get back within structure and be able to bounce. And that's really the only level I have for you right now that's nearby for um, Friday's close, but we do have 524.61 and also 518.36. So the 524s comes from right here. And then the 518s is this wick low right here. So that's really it. Those are the nearby levels for moving averages. 50 SMA is all the way up here. 921 cloud all the way up here. And the same thing I said last week, if we do get a bounce, I think I said this on QQQ or NASDAQ. I said, if we got a bounce and we hit the 9 21 combo you want to sell out there same thing for this week if we do bounce and we get over 533 and price gets up to the one day 921 cloud just sell out once it gets there because it's probably gonna try to reject go back down aggressively same thing we did last week so yeah that's really it 533 that is key I think we're going to open below that if futures stay down right now. Like I said, futures down pretty aggressively. It's probably going to open under 533 if it stays down here. And, you know, if we do bounce and we can open back over 533, that does kind of increase my chances, I think, for the market to bounce. Also need VIX to cooperate. We'll see how VIX opens at four in the morning. That will play a big role in how the futures kind of play out in the middle of the night before the market opens. So we'll see how that goes. But like I said, 533, old back test zone. We have 524.60s, also an old back test zone right there. And then we have 518.36, kind of a wick low right here. And that's really it. All right, and on to QQQ, which actually had a much cleaner trend line bounce. So we drew this new trend line from the October lows, test one, test two, test three. Here we are on Tuesday with a perfect touch and just totally ripped. I mean, NASDAQ was all up almost 4% and we ended up kind of finding resistance at the gap and also look at the 921 cloud, just as I had mentioned. So I mentioned if you're gonna buy the trend line and try to go long down here, you wanted to sell once it got up there. As you can see, it hit the 50 SMA, which is your long green line right here. It hit, hit your cloud right here and also hit that start of the gap and use that as resistance as well. So you kind of had three things going against you. You had the cloud, you had the 50 SMA and also the gap start. And that was brutal. So very short term bounce but we did get it. And hopefully you're able to catch that at least. It's really hard to short in this market. Obviously with the last year, every time you short, you get blasted out of the water. So people are a little bit hesitant, including myself. I like to buy the dips better. It's a little bit easier. And overall, I mean, we do have one kind of day that we're closing VIX over 20. So when the VIX starts closing over 20, that does kind of introduce a potential for the market to start selling after each rally. And when the VIX is staying over 20, that's kind of when you want to start paying attention to, you know, shorting the rips. So maybe we're in a new era here. We'll have to see. This is only one close so far over the 20s. But anyways, we do have some new levels here on the QQQ to mark since we're kind of near them. I think we're going to open under this 433 actually because the NASDAQ is, is down so much today on the futures. We might open under this, but if we do kind of bounce and open up flat, this 433 and the 449.30s, this old back test area you probably just rounded up to 450 that is kind of your bull zone that needs to hold if that flushes this trend line break will turn into much more if that happens you can start shooting for the 200 sma right here this little green dots and red dots that is the 200 sma on the one day we haven't been down here in a really long time since october lows we kind of got down to the 200 sma it was a great spot to dip by for october but yeah regardless if i'm looking for bounces in the market i'm treating them very short term and like i said last week if we do bounce again and we pull up into the one day 921 cloud just sell once we get to the 921 cloud because you have no idea how it's going to react once it gets to that cloud it could just do the same thing it did last week and that's that's why I sell. I sell once it gets up there. So yeah, QQQ did close under the trend. Not good. It will need to get back over trend, obviously. You do have 449.34 and also 443 as potential support. Pretty bearish below that. I'm not sure how this equates to the NASDAQ futures. It might be under this already tonight, but you know, tonight doesn't really matter. We want to see how the open looks on Monday. So we'll see how that goes. If you open below 443, might be in a little bit of trouble. We'll have to see. If it does open under 443, I'll probably wait for it to get down to the 200 SMA before trying to buy the dip, especially for a swing trade. Um, but the VIX is kind of high. And you know what they say, when the VIX is high, it's time to buy. So we'll see how that goes. Might need it to go a little bit higher, but it did hit almost, I think it hit over 30 actually, the VIX. So very crazy week last week, especially on Friday. Just unbelievable. But yeah, that's really all I got for you. I got 443 as a potential dip buy. I got 449.34 as a potential dip buy area. Obviously, you got the trend line kind of working against you. MACD is negative. So a couple of things working against you. So if you do buy the dip, treat it very short term. If it reaches the cloud, sell out once you get there. Maybe even... If it gets back up to the trend and starts testing that, you might want to be careful at that spot too. So you might only have a little bit of a couple of points here to work with to the upside before it 
finds resistance again, but we do have a decent zone here. Like I said, 449.30s, a little back test, and also a wick low. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over the VIX. So last week, here was Friday's close. I mentioned we wanted to get under 16 to see a bounce in the market. We actually didn't do that. Uh, we did get it briefly under it, but it did treat 16 as a bounce area. We did not even close under 16, so that was very weird. I actually thought we got under this, but I guess I was wrong. We did not get under 16 to see that bounce last week into Wednesday. Maybe it was because of FOMC. As you can see, I mean, VIX was down almost 10% this day. And here was Tuesday. So yeah, that makes sense, actually. So Tuesday was a little bit red. And we did run up and then VIX crush on Wednesday for FOMC. And that's when we had that really big bounce on the SPY at the trend line. Also QQQ at the trend line as well. So we did not get the close under 16 that I was looking for to see a bigger bounce in the market. And that's understandable due to the earnings, due to the non-farm payrolls on Friday, and also a little bit of recession fears on Friday as well. And this is just insane. I mean, it just treated this 1604 to 1540 area as a launch pad. If we go down here, this is why 1604 and 1540 uh, a close under that was so important because it could act as support and staying over it is relatively elevated compared to where we've been over the last year and obviously you just can't predict a big breakout like this on the vix it's literally just impossible it is good to be hedged and already be in but i mean nobody would have seen vix running 50 percent on friday it hasn't happened for a really long time i think the last time the vix ran this much was 2021 but yeah it's pretty crazy how it did follow our levels for the most part you know, holding the 1604 as a kind of a launch pad. And even if we got rid of those and we went to the moving averages, it's the same thing. You got the 921 cloud acting as a higher low right here, launch pad upward. Also closing under the 200 SMA still, the dots. So the fact that VIX is staying over the 200 SMA and also staying over the 921 cloud, even the 50 SMA, all the moving averages, that does give it premise to, you know, kind of march higher. So yeah, for this week, it's actually a new kind of outlook. We're at a completely new zone. Uh, we do have a new kind of area to look at that we haven't looked at for months because we haven't been here since April in 2024. So it's been months. We do have this big 23 area. You want to see VIX starting to close under 23s. And then overall, it will want to close under 2136 as well, which is this kind of area right here. So here's your new focus level 2308, 2136. We want VIX closing under this for a bounce in the market. Trading above this is very elevated. You're probably going to see crazy swings in the market. Be very careful. I had a way better week in futures last week, just scalping futures than trading options. I mean, the, the premium were just crazy last week for options and overall you had to be very quick get in and out i mean unless you were you know shorting from the top and shorting into the lows with puts it was very hard to trade last week but very easy for future scalping so it's just way easier to trade those last week for me personally than options premium but yeah that's really it guys uh 2308 we want vix closing back under that any close over 23s i feel like it's still a threat for the vix to go higher same thing over 21 i feel like if it's staying over 20s in general that is a little bit scary but as you can see i mean the last time we did get up here at this area we did sell off very aggressively obviously you kind of had a short-term bounce right there and then sold off very aggressively and we do have a really big wick on this we'll have to see how that turns out maybe this wick is telling us that you know it's probably going to dump lower but we'll have to see really if you wanted to wait for a close under 23 before going long in the market or just wait for a very aggressive move under 23 you could definitely go long once it starts breaking back under 23 and then once it reaches 2136 you want to watch the vix again once it gets to that area because what if it pulls back into it down here and it tries to hold it up right there on the 15 minute or the you know the one hour time frame shorter term time frames as we saw when it rejected down here and it held up uh 16 and also 1540 as kind of a support so same thing as uh 2136 likewise for 23s if it uh, vix opens up aggressively which it might because futures are down if it pulls back into 23 and holds as kind of it did back here that could try to act as a launch pad so you got to be careful and that's why we want to see closes under 23 and closes under 2136 so i love you guys make sure you like comment and subscribe i'm gonna get this chopped up sent out all that good stuff i love you and i'm out there's a reason why xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas with over 2.5 million dollars paid in the last two years to contributors users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time if you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today completely free of charge